A warm welcome to this course about semantic technologies. In this session I will explain what semantic technologies are and why you need to embrace them if you want to tackle current and upcoming business and technology challenges. And we will also address organizational considerations, what companies must do if they want to adapt semantic technologies. We are currently experiencing a tremendous shift in how technology is supporting business demands. Massive data volumes are generated, but only loosely linked to each other. To make use of the available data, it must be provided in the right context to the right people, and therefore we need metadata. Today, data integration often fails as semantics are only implicit and require a huge manual effort to make them processable. It requires explicit semantics that can be managed separately so that data adapts immediately to changing requirements. Let's take a look at a few examples where professional information management enhanced by semantic technologies is in high demand. E-commerce. You have hundreds and thousands of products in different variations uh, providing valuable personalized recommendations based on browsing and consumption patterns is key to understand the customer needs and thereby increase turnover. The same applies to the media industry. Your content must be displayed dynamically depending on the user interest to increase engagement. And let's keep in mind, many companies are nowadays confronted with high publishing volumes and therefore depend on well-working publishing processes. Um, this starts with internal organizations. So much information is produced that could be reused if only it would be provided to the people who need it. And when it comes to knowledge discovery and data analytics, it's all about generating insights to improve the business performance. We have data at our disposal, but we also have massive data silos due to lack of standards. And when you want to combine structured and unstructured data, how do you proceed? Managing digital assets in an automated way that resembles patterns of human thinking is key here. Keeping track of what is available online, where it is, how it is used and where and how it can be reused is a success critical task and we need first of all well-linked data to execute this task in an efficient and successful manner. Imagine a publishing house with content as main business resource. Hundreds of authors generate content on a daily basis. The authors enrich the content with metadata so that it can be internally found by other authors and that it can be reused also after its initial publication. Here you have an article about a new cocktail bar in London that specializes in wine cocktails. But what is really amazing about um, the bar is that they buy the wine only from organic vendors. However, the author has a focus on the bar opening, so he adds the text Cocktail Bar London Wine Cocktails. Another author in the organization who is researching about organic business models in the catering industry will not find this article. To solve this problem, we have to get rid of the notion of thinking in documents that get described by some subjective keywords and manage documents in regards to the entities they include. For that, the author needs machine-supported metadata recommendations. Machines will analyze the text and recognize the entities also due to the context and relations they include. That way, the article will be also revealed in a search about organic, organic business models. Let's take another example. Let's say a headhunter is searching for a CEO candidate in the financial sector. His company has established a semantic knowledge discovery portal where it bundles different kind of data sources so that he really gets high quality results for his query. The different data sources are linked through a semantic layer and there is a knowledge graph in place that models the knowledge domain around human resources. It is actually the knowledge graph that defines relevant metadata and recognizes the relevant entities in the different documents and data sources. The semantic layer simply maintains this metadata of different data sources separately. 
abbreviations, misspellings, synonyms, labels in different languages and relations between entities can be all managed in a knowledge graph. So it is the knowledge graph that um, detects that London, uh, Munich and Europe uh, and Zurich are European cities. It is the knowledge graph that is able to relate the abbreviation for Zurich to the concept Zurich. If the knowledge graph would not contain this geographic information, for example, a subject matter expert could easily include this information in the knowledge graph and this would change the metadata and semantic layer and therefore the query result. So because of the knowledge graph and the semantic layer that connects the different data sources, the headhunter gets um, results back for his sophisticated um, query. The corner piece of semantic technologies is the knowledge graph. With a knowledge graph, you can manage your resources. You model what you have and how it relates to each other. A knowledge graph defines and enriches your business objects with metadata and it connects the entities. A knowledge graph is sustainable, it grows over time. So you might change your knowledge modeling, but that will be immediately reflected in a knowledge graph. Relations might change, name of the entities might change, um, some business objects will stop being relevant, new one will be added. A graph processes these changes immediately it is not as rigid as tables and rows. Maintaining entities and your relations in a relational database is a very tedious process. Uh, a graph-based approach um, allows you to, to have only one concept as a resource and then link it with the other resources which um, rely to that. In a relational database, you have to duplicate the entities for every additional relation. So having a graph in place allows you to make sophisticated queries on the fly, whereas with a relational database, you will have to manipulate the data model constantly. Most organizations have data distributed in different formats in different databases. They have a big variety of business objects that get not found and used as frequently as they could because their information is locked up, for example, in text formats, which is one case of implicit semantics. This data even might have metadata, but descriptive keywords, tags, embed the business object only in a very limited um, search scenario. To make semantics explicit, we need an automated way to analyze the business objects and attach them with relevant metadata. And it means we need to have the relations between the business objects also stored in our database. To link data across different databases and formats, we have to create a semantic layer. Only then we will be able to use the data well uh, for dynamic applications. By now you should be aware that semantic applications are steered by knowledge graphs and that you don't need to go through the hassles of data migration to work with data from different data sources as a semantic layer connects your data silos. A knowledge graph can be developed and maintained separately from the semantic layer. That's why you can easily include subject matter experts in creating this knowledge model as it doesn't require any advanced technical skills. And there are some other methods and tools you need in order to adapt the potential of semantic technologies. To really make use of digital assets, we need to have a consistent and highly automized metadata management in place and we need to adapt standards-based technologies so that we have ultimate freedom which data we combine on the fly. And we need different kind of data models that can be processed in a way how human thinking works. When we start to go beyond relational data models and develop a graph-based approach for information management, we can process data in an agile way. And domains as knowledge modeling and text analytics become more important and need to be carefully considered when developing new applications. Last but not least, we have to bring technology potential and human resources together in a fruitful way. When business becomes more technical, we have to enable subject matter experts to run the semantic applications. 
The future of smart applications lies in combining machine learning and human interaction. This all taken together is what Semantic Technologies is about and we will address all these topics in detail through this e-learning program. So stay with me for the next tutorials. See you soon. Bye bye.